Perhaps the first step when looking to harvest information from the web using PowerShell Core is scraping web pages for useful information. In this video, I'll show you how to use Invoke Web Request to pull information from a given URL. Then we'll look at exploring the response we get back, including listing out a list of links and images. We'll wrap up this video by downloading all the images that match a specific criteria on our target website. Let's get into it. I'm currently browsing the list of contributors on the TechSnips website, and it looks like a good candidate for testing out the web scraping capabilities of PowerShell Core, as there's a lot of images here and a lot of links, which will give us a lot to play with. So I'll grab the URL for this page and head over to my editor. So I've got that URL in my editor, and I'm using Visual Studio Code running PowerShell Core 6.1. You can see that down the bottom right hand side of my editor. So with that URI, I can use it to invoke a web request against the page and store the contents that's returned in a variable. This will allow us to inspect the contents in a moment. Now you note the use basic passing switch. If you've used invoke web request in Windows PowerShell, chances are you're very familiar with this, as a lot of what you are doing wouldn't work without this. However, in PowerShell Core, you no longer need to include it as the functionality that it turned on is actually now on by default, and it's only included for backwards compatibility if your scripts were to be running on Windows PowerShell. So for this demo, we'll get rid of it, and then we'll run my invoke web request. So with that done, we can start looking at the contents that have been returned from my web request. For instance, let's look at the links. Now in this specific example, you can see we're getting the full HTML for each of those links by default. And those are all coming in under the outer HTML property. However, there are other properties available. And you can see that by piping your links through to get member. And here you'll see the tag name property, which is always going to be A, and also the href property, which is going to give us the actual target of our links. So if we go ahead and just select the href, we'll now see all of the links that were present on that page. And you can tell very quickly that the TechSnips website is using relative links. But instead of links, let's have a look at something a little bit more visual. And we'll list out all of the images. And in this listing, you can see that we've got the outer HTML, tag name, class, and source for each image on the page. As we scroll up, we can see that there's images for each contributor, and they are in a contributors folder. And we can see other generic site-specific images, which aren't in the contributors folder. So, if we wanted to only see the images for contributors, we can use the where method and look for sources that match our specific criteria, which in this case is just having contributors in the path. So if we run that again, we'll now see that we've got a list of just the contributors' images. And as before, when we were looking at the links, we're only actually seeing the outer HTML, but the other properties are still available to us. So how about we see if we can download all of these images? I'll start by piping that list, of contributor headshots into a for each loop, and we'll get the file name of those images first. We're doing that by splitting the source on the slash and selecting the last instance. So for example, with Nick Rimmer's image, we'd end up with the file name nick-rimmer.png. Next, we can call invoke web request again against each specific image. Now remember, we're dealing with relative links here, so we've had to specify the base URL to the site, TechSnips.io, and then we're also specifying an out file this time, which means the contents that gets downloaded will be saved to that directory. Now just to show that I'm not pulling a fast one on you, let's have a look at that directory where I'm saving these images to, and you can see that it's currently empty. So if I run my for each loop, you see it works away for a moment, and then we can run get child item again, and we can see the contents. And just to really drive it home, let's open up that directory in Windows Explorer and see the images are actually there. So we've started on our journey of pulling information from the web, 